We're going to start by downloading the image for the ping board. Go to pynq.io, pink.io website, and then go to boards and you'll see downloadable pink images right here. My board is pink Z2, so we're just gonna go here. You'll need to register on Zilink's website, but it's pretty simple procedure and after that you'll be able to download the image. For burning the image I recommend you to use Balena Etcher. It's one of the simplest ways to burn the image to SD card. Of course you can use other software if you want, but this is one of the simplest options. I already have it downloaded, so I'm just going to run it. We'll select the image we downloaded. This is Pink Z2 version 2.4. Um, the image itself is about 5.67 gigabytes, so you'll need at least 8 gigabytes SD card, but 8 gigabytes is going to be quite tight, so maybe 16 is better. I have 32 gigs, and then just press flash. I already have my SD card flash, so I'm not going to, to press it. So first of all, as long as you're connected to the same network, you can go to pink hostname and the port is 9090 and then you'll see Jupyter Notebook Login. Default password is Zilinx. Just enter that and login. I recommend you to change the default password just to be on the safe side of it. I'm not sure if there are any people around hacking, uh, hacking, hacking pink ports. This is the notebook directory on, on, on your pink board. And there are a couple of notebooks to get you started, like base, common, getting started, uh, and welcome to pink, for example. Let's open this one. Uh, yeah, it's a short description of documentation and other, other example notebooks here. You can open the terminal by pressing U, terminal. Uh, here's a command line and you can, you know, use it as a regular common line terminal, bash terminal in Ubuntu, just like that. All right, now for the first demo, I already have QNN repository clones from the GitHub. To find more information about machine learning on pink boards, you can go to pink.io ML machine learning, and there's a lot of information and links to demos repositories right here. They actually also explain the neural network acceleration architectures. There are two possible architectures. So the main difference between those two architectures is the feedforward implemented all on the programmable logic, all the network is there, and data flow is a loopback. Just parts, usually the middle part of the network is running on the programmable logic, meaning on the, on FPGA, and usually the first layer and the last layer, fully connected layers, they run on the CPU. Um, so as you might understand, data flow with a loopback will be slower than feed forward data flow, but at the same time more flexible. Let's execute. Um, let's execute one of the examples with loopback architecture, which is this one: data flow with the loopback. We're going to do uh, ImageNet dataset validation in the loop. So you can see the neural network here, and as it is explained, pink layers are executed in the programmable logic on FPGA at reduced precision, one bit for weights and two bits for activations, while other layers are executed in Python, meaning on the CPU. So the first layer and three fully connected layers are executed on the CPU, and the rest of it is executed on a PGA. We'll need to do some standard imports. Instantiate the classifier. 
which will automatically download the bitstream onto the device. Here we are getting the ImageNet classes information from Pico file. And then finally we're launching the demo. Um, first of all, we load, we load the weights for the uh, layers executed on the CPU, which is three fully connected layers here, and the first convolutional layer. Then we feed the output of the first convolutional layer into the middle layers that are in the programmable logic. And then finally, what we get from the last layer that is implemented in the programmable logic, we feed into the first fully connected layer. Here is the relevant part about that. And then finally, in the loop, we get the images and perform the inference. We apply the softmax on the results and then we get the, uh, the, 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 the top result, which is our prediction. Alright, so let's run this cell. It actually takes some time to load. Okay, and here we have the images of the dogs and other objects classified. And every image doesn't take that much time, but it is not as fast as our bottleneck here. It's the layers run on the CPU, those layers. We're really able to see that our bottleneck is a software implementation. Those layers executed on the CPU, there is, there is a software platform execution time and there is hardware is programmable logic execution time and it is much much faster on the hardware than the software now let's try CFR 10 dataset demo with the data flow architecture which is where all the layers of the network are implemented in the hardware on the programmable logic Let's go to BNN folder. BNN stands for Binary Neural Networks. And this example shows how to use binary neural networks on pink. Example of image recognition with binarized neural network. Binarized means that weights are binarized, meaning they can only be 0 or 1. The weights of the neural network. The network has 6 convolutional layers three max pool layers and three fully connected layers and all of them are implemented in the programmable logic. Now let's check the available parameters. We're going to use uh, CFAR10. Let's initialize the classifiers. Print the list of classes. It's 10 classes, CFAR10 classes. And then open an image. Now, a nice deer here. And then we're going to perform inference in the hardware on the programmable logic. Now, that was fast. The classification rate is about 632 images per second. And yeah, it's a deer. Now, we're going to try doing the same in the software implementation of the algorithm running on the CPU. Okay, that's much slower, and we only have the classification rate of 0 0.63 images per second. Here we have some more detailed classification information. So that was a demo of binarized neural network running on the programmable logic of Pink's FPGA. And we really can see the difference it makes when we use the hardware acceleration for machine learning inference on pink board.